ass is first. I eat your food, I snatch your work. I greet you fools with no doubt, no love. Pick up younger back in all black blue thugs. I'm here now, show the whole no blood. You gotta respect my gangster, respect my gutter. Oh, Whether I'm ripping this rap shit or I'm grabbing the butter. It don't matter, my pockets getting fatter. If the red beans ain't straight for gold, black shit. I turn right like shiny, busting the club. Come in my hole to a building surrounded by nothing but thugs. I'm loving how to hold it. But the niggas ain't flaming in the pieces The tinted cup is still banging it I run up all you niggas on market and spark it Pitch black a broad day, I'm sure they hit my target yeah, I'm so glad me a label won't sign me But if you look in the deal, the bitches don't find me They took it down, but the bricks were strong uh, In 97, had to brick my own uh, Forever in my memory, cause now the church is gone Rest in peace, all my G's and you know what it's all You, what's good, YouTube? I trust everybody's doing all right out there. I trust everybody's making it, man. The best of the day, what it's supposed to be anyway. You know what I'm saying? I go by the name of No Face the Rambler, man. And um, today we're gonna get into this topic, man. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it to the to the Midwest, the South Midwest. You know what I'm saying? And um. We're going to go into to Louisville, Kentucky right now, man. There's definitely some G's out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I myself was ripping and running around Louisville, Kentucky, man. You know, shout out to the East End. Shout out to the West End, man. Park Hill Projects. You know, the Victory Park. Uh, shout out to the projects up east that they tore down. You know, Clarksdale. I don't know if they uh, tore down Shepherd Square yet, but, you know. And also, shout out to the Dirty South. Louisville, man, you know, Iroquois, which I believe they shut shut those projects down as well, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I had some good times in Louisville, man. I, I met some, some real good people in Louisville, and I met some real interested people in Louisville, man. And I'm going to go ahead and get into this brother's demonstration right here, man. And I'm going to to tread lightly here. Because individuals are locked up and individuals deceased, you know what I'm saying? So, those that are from Louisville, you know the story, you know what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? I'm not going to mention names or nothing like that. I'm just going to give, you know, my overall spectrum of this individual, man. And this individual I'm talking about, you know, he goes by the name of Kerry Williams, man. A.K.A. Lil' Kerry, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, he had a rap name, Smurda, man. He was rapping with a dude that I know named Daddy-O. I, myself, knew Kerry. Kerry was a very uh, controversial person in Louisville. You know what I'm saying? And individuals in Louisville have certain things to say about him. You know what I mean? Some good. Some bad, you know what I mean? I'm just going to keep it fair and balanced, man. However, you know, when I met Kerry, I met Kerry, man, in 2001, you know what I'm saying? And he had a, a cousin that he was real close with. And I'm not going to say the brother's name, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just going to say that his name was, you know, Tion, you know what I'm saying? And, uh... You know, anybody that's from Louisville, they know they notorious, man. Lil' Kerry and Lil', you know, Lil' Tion. You know what I'm saying? Tion, you know what I mean? Well, you know, the homie was definitely um, blood-affiliated, man. You know what I mean? I smoked some trees with him before, but, you know, we chopped it up. But, uh, you know, dude was just going to keep it all the way a buck, man. You know, the energy that, that Kerry gave off when he was around him, man. Kerry was just a real... A real official dude, man. But he was grimy. You know what I'm saying? He was real grimy, man. You know what I mean? And um, when it was time to eat, Kerry gonna go out there and do what he gotta do. You know what I mean? And for Louisville, man, for the street history, as far as the gang ethic and, and them game banging, man, stems back, you know, um, 
to the early 90s. In fact, with, uh, you know, you know, Lil' Kerry and his cousin Tion, you know what I'm saying, um, were actually one of the most prominent and most hated blood niggas coming out of Louisville. You know what I'm saying? It was like on, on a Crips shit list in Louisville. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, Kerry came out of Southwood Projects, which was on Louisville's west side. They ended up tearing those projects down. You know what I mean? Um, in fact, uh, it was actually ordered by Bill Clinton to get rid of those. There was uh, two Merriman Projects, uh, Southwick and Cotter Homes. You know what I'm saying? In fact, um, you know, like I said, Bill Clinton uh, ordered for it to get tore down and all that. However, a lot of individuals from the projects kind of went various directions. A lot of them ended up migrating to, to Beach of Terrace, which is the project, uh, you know, like downtown Louisville, like in the heart of it, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, Lil' Kerry kind of ran back and forth from there to the West End, you know, just basically terrorizing his section, man, and was just doing what he do, you know what I mean? Well, now I gave you a background. A little carry man, most one of the most notorious, notorious G's out of Louisville, man. That I actually got the pleasure to meet. I got the pleasure to chop it up with. You know what I'm saying? The fact when I was um fighting my case, man, they was shackled on the elevator together. And we actually threw it up. You know what I'm saying? On some, some blood shit, and I uh, we chopped it up. You know what I mean? And um, you know, he was in there. Uh, I think he was fighting like a. A dope case or some shit like that. Because that was the last time I seen him. And that was, um, like 2003, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he was fighting a little dope case, man. And, uh, you know, he just told, last words he told me, man, was just, you know, keep my head, man, keep calm, man, and, you know, let go and let God, you know what I'm saying? And that was the last time I talked to, to Lil' Kerry, man. And, um, I got moved to the sixth floor. In the jail, and Lil' Kerry went on to the uh, the third floor, you know what I'm saying? In the county jail at the time. And um, I didn't really too much hear nothing about him after that, you know what I mean? Because we was kind of all floating around through the jail doing our thing, whatever. But I know um, when I, I took my plea deal, man, and I got shipped off to prison, man, you know, um, when I touched down, I got to prison around... Uh, I want to say February, February 2006, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I was getting adjusted to prison, man, and I can recall, you know, June 2006, man, the energy on the yard was kind of, was kind of magnetic, man. And it was up and down, you know what I'm saying? Um, the news had spread it on the yard quickly that, uh, you know, Lil' Kerry was murdered, you know what I'm saying? In June 2006. And I remember like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Thinking to myself like, oh shit, like, damn, it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, the love and hate relationship he had with his city in Louisville, man. It's like you could kind of see it happening and everybody was kind of waiting for it to happen. But it just didn't fold the way it did. You know what I'm saying? It just didn't pop off the way that it did. And when it did happen, it was like, you know, everybody was shocked. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm going to talk about, man, like I said, I'm going I'm to tread on, I'm going to tread on, uh, you know, Waters, I'm, I'm gonna walk real light on this, man, because I know what I want to say, but I don't want it to come off as, uh, you know, I'm, I'm disrespecting this brother, defaming him, or any of Betty, you know, anybody else that was affiliated with this whole situation. But sources that I got been in penitentiary, man, you know what I'm saying, um, into regards of a low Kerry's death. Um, break it down like this, man. You know, it was a brother from Chicago. And we're just going to call him Yachty. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, I don't know how long he'd been in Louisville. 
I don't know what a, what time he came in there in Louisville or nothing like that. But however the crazy situation was, dude came down to Louisville. Dude had to work. And, um, you know, he was getting money down there. And apparently, you know, some cats from Louisville, man, was basically, you know, scheming on this dude. And they wanted him got. And there was a big time, a big time hitter. You know what I'm saying? In Louisville, who was known for clapping motherfuckers, man. You know what I'm saying? Dudes, and he's in the feds right now, you know what I mean? He done told all niggas and shit, too. You know what I mean? Kind of find out he was a foreman. But for confidentiality purposes, I'm not going to say his name. I'm just going to say, you know, we're going to say it's uh, it's T. Riley. You know what I'm saying? T. Riley was basically known as a hitman down there. He was doing hits basically in Louisville, stemming from the fucking mid-90s. You know what I'm saying? All the way up to the present of what I was talking about. And um, word got back to T. Riley about this Chicago nigga down there having um, you know, this work, and it was also informed to T. Riley that um, you know, the Chicago dude had up to almost you know a quarter mil a cash in his crib. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, individuals telling T. Riley like, yo, you know, you do this, man. You go ahead and get this dude. You know what I mean? Just we could divvy up the paper. I have the situation go. You know what I'm saying? And from what I was told, that T. Riley kind of cut dude out of the situation and basically took the work upon himself. He took the job upon himself. And uh, what T. Riley did, from my understanding, from what was told to me in the penitentiary, Sources that we was building about was that um T Riley had brought in um Lil Kerry into the fold because like I said Lil Kerry was he, he was gutter you know what I'm saying he was grimy he he was down for it you know what I mean it's like whatever you know what I'm saying you tell him you give him the word he's gonna go you know what I'm saying and um he brought in Lil Kerry on the job and basically told Lil Kerry like look man you know go off in this dude's crib you know what I'm saying. Bob him, you know what I mean? Kick door, man. You know what I mean? Get to work. Get the money. You know what I mean? And how we gonna do this? You can keep the work. Just give me the cash. You know what I'm saying? That was agreement that, you know, Lil' Kerry and T. Riley had. You know what I'm saying? And, um... It's fate would have it, man. You know, Lil' Kerry went and did what he did with the Chicago dude, man. You know, he went in there, you know, laid him down. He took his work, you know what I mean? He took his cash, man. And um he even um attempted to take take his Jeep. And somewhere down the line when Lil Kerry was exiting the robbery of the Chicago cat, he hopped in the Jeep, threw the work in the back, and kept the cash on him in a bag or whatever. And um he had second thoughts about it. You know what I mean? Like Fuck T. Riley. I'm cutting that nigga out the middle. I want all this for myself type shit. So what Lil' Kerry did next was was even more crazy. You know, he hopped out. He hopped out the Jeep. He left the work in the Jeep. And he set fire to the Jeep. And he took off. You know what I mean? And he kept the cash. You know what I'm saying? And... The thing that was ill about the situation was um he kinda knew Lil Kerry kinda knew he basically had screwed over the wrong dude into regards to T. Riley. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, man, fuck it. Now he knew T. Riley was ahead of him. he knew T. Riley was gonna be coming at him anyway. So Lil Kerry's mind frame was like, man, fuck it, you know, I'm just gonna ball out and live it live it up to the most, you know what I'm saying? And uh from what was, you know, told to me again, like I said, man, um, the Chicago dude ended up surviving the robbery. And unknown to the Chicago dude, the T. Riley was put on about the Chicago, about him. But also unknown to the Chicago dude, T. Riley was the one to set the whole robbery up. Anyway, the Chicago dude approached T. Riley. Knowing who Lil Kerry was. And 
he had more money and put the price on Lil Kerry's head. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, with that, from what I was told, man, Lil Kerry knew that there was basically a hit out on him. And, uh, he just decided to ball out to his last days, you know what I mean? Um, he even, um, went to the funeral home and basically purchased his, purchased his own casket, his own burial, all types of other shit, man. And, um, you know, from my understanding, you know, the brother just kind of accepted his fate. And on, you know, June 6th, man, June 06, you know, the brother was just sitting on his, his, his mom's porch. And, uh, you know, somebody walked up on him and put his lights out. You know what I'm saying? And that was a situation with Lil' Kerry, man. And actually, the song that I was playing with this video, the verse of the dude that was spitting, that was actually Kerry Williams, a.k.a. Lil' Kerry, right there spitting that verse. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, all the individuals involved in this situation are incarcerated. Uh, T. Riley, like I said, you know, that nigga, he's an informant. The Chicago dude, Yachty, it's a rap for him. You know what I'm saying? He's in the bing. And, you know, that's basically where it stands at, man. But, you know, my thing is, man, you know, with Lil' Kerry, man, despite what a lot of other individuals want to say about him, you know, my interactions with dude, you know, he was a cool dude, man. You know, I fucked with him, man. I know he had, like, a, you know, a lot of a hatred coming from cats in the city, man, because of the dirt that he did. But, you know... Me honestly, man, you know, like I said, he was just a straight up and down dude, man. You know what I'm saying? And I got along with him, man. And you know, I just uh I hope his soul clean before he seen the dude coming that clapped him. You know what I'm saying? I hope he made his peace. And I hope he um you know, I hope he spiritually exited this world in a good place, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, Lil' Kerry, man, may you rest in peace. Rest in peace, bro. You know what I'm saying? He was a good dude for my dealings with you, man. You know what I mean? I don't have no ill wills and no bad about you, bro. But that's just my sentiments on that. And um, that was that. Most notorious G's, Lil' Kerry. And this is the type of brother... That you're going to stumble across on a Fez magazine. And you really won't hear anything about it, man. But the whole purpose of this video, like I said, for education awareness. And let you know, man, that, you know, there's real dudes and goons in every city, man. You know what I mean? Like, don't think that wherever you from is the liveest, man. Because in your backyard, you know what I'm saying, you never know. And what I just told you, man, that shit read something out of like the fucking script out of the wire, yeah? You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down, man. But, yo, that's my sentiment on that. I'm no face to ram the man. It's 2018. Shout out to Louisville, Kentucky, man. 502 in the fucking building. Yo, I love y'all, man. It's no face to rambler. It's pro love with no love. Peace.